I mean new meaning. <laughs> I give new meaning to the term high maintenance woman. High maintenance woman. When I was two and a half. When I was two and a half. My mother threw my mother out of the house. My mother threw my father out of the house. I never saw or heard from him again. I never saw or heard from him again. He told me he didn't know what to remember. She told me that he didn't want to remember that he had a daughter. Alone, overweight, and holding secrets. Alone, overweight, and holding secrets. My emotional damage was undeniable. My emotional damage was undeniable. Not more. Fast forward 18 years. My mother was warned that my father had died. My mother received word that my father had died. And someone needed to claim his body. And someone needed to claim his body. Without thinking. I said, I'm going. Without thinking, I said, I'm going. So I went to New York. So I went to New York. Down a bar and walked the street from his apartment. Found a bar across the street from his apartment. And someone who could identify him. And someone who could identify him. Later that day. Later that day. I asked his landlord. I asked his landlord. If I could see his apartment. If I could see his apartment. We climbed up the way for light. We climbed up three flights of creaky stairs. To his door. To his door. I was scared. I was scared. Feeling disoriented. Feeling disoriented. As I stepped into the home. As I stepped into the home. Of the man I've been missing. Of the man I've been missing. All of my life. All of my life. In his bedroom. In his bedroom. And I opened the first drawer. As I opened the first drawer, I saw a wedding ring. I saw a wedding ring. My high school graduation picture. My high school graduation picture. And a white envelope. And a white envelope. My my life my. Yeah. Mark Mariah's first haircut. Inside was a lock of my red hair. Inside was a lock of my red hair. I was stunned. I was stunned. I felt a seismic shift in my identity. I felt a seismic shift in my identity. Years of hearing. My inner voice saying, "Years of hearing my inner voice saying, 'You're not good enough. You're not good enough. Pretty enough. Pretty enough. Thin enough. Thin enough. No man will ever love you. No man will ever love you. I realized. I realized that to my father. That to my father. I'm one day." I was a treasured lost child. I was changed forever. Now, as a psychotherapist, now as a psychotherapist, 
Now, as a psychotherapist for 40 years, I know. I know. That when we walk around feeling unlovable or unworthy, it darkens our entire life. This lack of internal self support and self love. Brings profound aloneness, shame, and hopelessness. We need to create an inner life. We need to create an inner life. A home. A home. Where we can always where we can always turn for support and unconditional acceptance. I call this a mining already loved. I call this arriving already loved by you. By you. If you so if you fall, you will be the first one there, you will be the first one there to, pick you to pick yourself up. In 1981, I fell, I fell. big time. I I was diagnosed with ALS and given a 10% chance to live two years. Later that day, this man <laughs> Ron, my hero, my hero. Asked, me to marry him. asked me to marry him. A death sentence and a marriage, <laughs> and a marriage proposal <laughs> on the same day. On the same day. Wow. Wow. I knew that to get myself that bad that um I knew that to give myself the best chance of survival, I needed to be free of self criticism. I needed to be free of self criticism. Blame and guilt. Gain, uh, blame and guilt. I needed a close I needed a close, compassionate connection with every cell in my body. With every cell in my body. Every step of the way. Every step of the way. And I needed to talk to myself. And I needed to talk to myself. Like a one to I. Like I would to a treasured child. Mariah, I love you. Mariah, I love you. And I will be with you through this. And I will be with you through this. Every day. Every day. I hear you draw your life. Until you draw your last breath. 
This healthy inner conversation has huge transformational power for each of us. Thirty-six years ago, if I had accepted the identity of a dead woman the identity of a dead woman walking, I know I would not be here today. I know I would not be here today. I made it my daily practice. I've made it my daily practice. To arrive here, there, and everywhere. Already loved. Already loved. Let me leave you with this thought. Let me leave you with this thought. If you and I. If you and I. Lock arms were to lock arms and walk and roll, and walk and roll through one day of your life, and you, in my ear, and you whispered in my ear every thought you had. Every thought you had. Would I have a good day? Would I have a good day? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.